Have you ever seen a newborn animal? Or better yet, have you ever seen an animal give birth? In nature, animals have many different ways of bringing life into the world, and they all vary greatly. We can't cover all of them today, but here are 15 crazy ways animals give birth. Don't be mistaken by this ocean swimmer's fish-like tendencies. Stingrays give birth to live young in litters of 5 to 13. But despite the live births, this ain't no mammal pregnancy. Stingrays are oviviparous, so instead of a placenta, the female stingray's embryos absorb nutrients through a yolk sac. Once that runs out, the mother provides a nutritious uterine liquid, or milk. Just before the stingray young are ready to leave their mother's bodies, they push themselves out of their shells. Stingray babies are immediately independent. Not quite a mammal birth and not quite a fish birth. The stingray's process of bringing their young into the ocean is like no other. And neither is that of the panda. Pretty ironic that the species known as a giant panda are born weighing about the same weight as a pomegranate. Much like human babies, these little fluffy guys are born pretty much totally helpless. In fact, more so than human babies. Panda cubs are born with no markings and are totally blind. Giant panda mothers have to completely commit to their newborns. After giving birth, these massive mothers go to their dens for several days to nurse and care for their young. They don't leave once for several days, not even to get a bite of bamboo or a sip of water. If anyone needs maternity leave, it's these mamas. Now that you've seen a tiny baby, how about a massive one? The size of a whale calf is determined by the size of its mother, but in most cases, newborn whales are about one-third the size of their mothers. For example, a gray whale calf will always be smaller than a blue whale calf. Despite looking like a giant fish, whales are in fact mammals, meaning they carry offspring in their womb and give birth to live young. After 9 to 16 months in the womb, whales are ready to leave the oven. Unlike most mammals, Whales exit the womb feet, or in this case, tail first. This is to prevent drowning. In fact, the first thing the mother does after giving birth is nudges her baby to the surface to take their first breath. Whale calves stick to their moms for about two years, until they're fully developed. That is, except for killer whales. These big babies stay with their mamas for life. Guess killer whales aren't so killer after all. Killer whales must respect their mothers a lot. Giraffes certainly do. In fact, giraffes trust their mother's opinion so much that they choose to give birth in the exact location that their mother did, and that their mother's mother did. These locations are often the birthing places for many giraffes and many generations. They'll continue to return to these locations to have all their young to come. It's no secret that giraffes are tall. In fact, these long-legged creatures are the tallest mammal in the world. Because giraffe calves have such long spinely necks, their mothers have to give birth standing. Calves come out of the womb head and front legs first, in a superman position. At six feet tall, these newborns are probably about the same height as Clark Kent. But let's talk about an animal that's less superman and more aquaman. Like whales, dolphins come into the world flippers first. They need to get their tails going as quickly as possible so that once they're out, they can swim to the surface. With a bit of nudging from mom, of course, these young dolphins have to fight to the surface to take their first breath. Dolphins only give birth to one child at a time, and these newborn dolphins have incredibly high mortality rates. Dolphin young are wholly dependent on their mothers after being born, getting all their nutrients from their thick paste-like milk. Dolphin gogurt, anyone? Speaking of risky births, Imagine your intro to life was getting dropped from up to three feet off the ground. This is what it is for newborn elephants, and at 200 to 320 pounds, they aren't going down lightly. The ammonia sac is slowly released during pregnancy to provide a bit of an air cushion for the drop, meaning it hopefully stays intact and softens the blow of the fall. These big babies nurse until they are four years old and rely on their mothers until they're six years old. Not long, considering she was pregnant for nearly two years. Imagine if humans took that long to cook. Elephants aren't easily compared to humans, but these next animals are. The craziest thing about orangutan births, just how similar they are to human birth. 
These primates are pregnant for about eight and a half months before giving birth, just one month shy of us. After the newborn orangutan has been birthed, they are entirely dependent on their mother. Like a human baby, its head needs to be supported, as its neck is still too weak to hold that massive noggin up on its own. This mama orangutan knows just what to do. She instinctively clears her baby's airways and keeps it supported and warm against her body. When it comes to childcare, these orangutans don't monkey around. Orangutans may take childbearing slowly, but not rabbits. Rabbits are only pregnant for about a month, meaning they can have several litters of bunnies a year. Baby rabbits are formerly known as kittens. While this might be baffling, what's even more puzzling is the tiny lump of fur you may find wriggling in your yard, indicating a rabbit has kindled or given birth. The nest she makes is created from mostly fur and some soft dried grass. If you've ever seen a rabbit give birth, consider yourself lucky. Rabbits are usually quite shy and won't give birth until the coast is utterly clear. No visitors past this point, please. Speaking of animals who are weird about guests at their birth, let's talk about hedgehogs. When it comes to picky, these critters take the cake. Hedgehogs need the conditions to be just right during birth. If there's a disturbance right before or after the sow is given birth, it'll throw her completely off. How off, you ask? Well, enough to either move her young to an entirely new nest, or worse, eat them. To avoid having to eat her babies, the sow usually gives birth in the dead of night. Although each hedgehog's tolerance for disturbance is different, it's generally recognized that hedgehogs who are close to giving birth should be left alone at all costs. Furthermore, baby hedgehogs, or hoglets, shouldn't be handled until they're at least seven days old. After all, friends don't want friends to eat their babies, and sometimes, friends don't want friends to know they're pregnant. Tigers are the masters of stealthy pregnancy. Despite having a gestation period of about three and a half months, tiger mothers don't begin to show a belly bulge until the last 10 to 12 days of their pregnancy. During this time, she'll look for a cozy and secluded location to give birth. These big cats have an average of three cubs per litter, but can also have up to seven. Between litters, tigresses typically wait 18 to 24 months. Bet you didn't learn any of this watching Tiger King, but these aren't the only sly cats. Lionesses have won up the tigresses in terms of pregnancy privacy. These fierce moms keep their pregnancies as secretive as possible and wait until they're in labor to quietly sneak off from the pack to find a birthing location. After having her litter in her top secret lair, the lioness will stay away from the pack for about three months. So why are these big cats so secretive? The answer is pretty straightforward. They want their young to survive. After all, it's rough out there. It's estimated that a lioness must copulate 3,000 times for each cub that survives past a year. These cubs are super precious. Less intimidating, but just as protective, is the donkey mother. Like many animals on the list, donkeys prefer to give birth in the dead of night. After about 11 to 14 months of pregnancy, the mare is ready to give birth. Signs of labor, or as it's called in the donkey world, foaling, include swollen udders and milk beginning to run and restlessness. Watching for these signs is essential for farmers because foaling is a pretty quick process. Due to these animals' fragile necks, donkey foals leave their mother's wombs in a superman stance, just like giraffes. That is, unless their mother is a giant fire-breathing dragon and these donkeys have wings. But we're looking at you, Shrek 2. Sorry, we got off topic. We'll stay on track, just like this next animal. Despite their generally refractive and unhinged behavior, squirrels have a very organized yearly baby-making schedule. Squirrel mating happens between December and February, just in time for Valentine's Day, and then again from June through August. With a gestation period of 38 to 46 days, newborn squirrels arrive just over a month after each of these mating periods. These squirrel babies, called kits or kittens, are born blind and spend the first two to three months of their lives depending on their mother for nutrients and care. They spend these months in one of two nests, the tree cavity den or the leaf nest. The tree cavity den looks coziest to us, but what do we know? We may be nuts, but we aren't squirrels, and we certainly aren't snakes. But these squirmy creatures are. 
While some snake babies hatch from eggs, other snakes give birth to live young. In fancy terms, this means that snakes' birthing patterns can be sorted into two categories, oviparous and viviparous, or sometimes a combination of both, known as ovoviviparous. The rosy boa that you see here is ovoviviparous. Oh, what a mouthful. Just like the stingrays we already talked about, this means that the snake lays eggs, but the eggs stay within the mother's body, and the offspring are born only after they've hatched internally. While many animals stay with their children for days, months, or even a lifetime, snake moms tend to slither right off after birth. See ya, squirt. On to a stronger mother-child relationship. We've got a little challenge that will take five seconds and will change your life forever. You ready? All you have to do is like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and you will receive 10 free years of good luck. It's as simple as that. Sea lions. These massive animals have such strong bonds with their children that they create individualized calls for each pup to locate them amongst the sea of newborns on the beach. After sea lion mothers spent a year being pregnant, they give birth in June or July. Despite their namesake, sea lion pups don't know how to swim as newborns, but learn quickly with other pups during the first few months of their lives. Pups weigh about 15 pounds at birth and spend somewhere between six and nine months nursing before they're ready to fly the coop, or more specifically, flee to the sea.